All right, you ready? Yep. All right, so last year, right around WrestleMania, we we opened up the the blog to uh, just about anyone, and one of those uh, idiots, people, one of those people who joined us uh, was was my wife. Wife quotes. Wife quotes was born, and I think you did WrestleMania predictions. I did, and I didn't do them as a wrestling fan. I did them as a murder she wrote fan. Yes, that's right. It was I forget what we called it. Um, it was wrestling. Mania predictions from a murder she wrote fan I believe it was pretty straightforward it, mi- it might have been that clear but uh, I, I thought it was a witty name but I guess not anyways <laughs> uh, so we're going to do something just like that uh, but not in blog form we're going to uh, release a little bit of extra content for you guys um, because we don't like you yeah, and so we're going to make you suffer through this you guys um, you know you are going to have to to listen to these predictions just like I'm going to have to listen to these predictions but last year I did life, pretty well you were, yeah you did pretty well I think I was like at 60% which is I think I was head to head with your predictions knowing I, what you were talking about yeah yeah so it's probably accurate Jessica I, Fletcher knows what's up you guys last year I was all flat predictions in general but this year I'm doing much better um well you won't yeah. know well, no, I'm just saying in general. Generally speaking, of all the WWE and TNA pay per views, I was I was probably in last place as far as the uh, the FTW guys go. Uh, this year, I've been doing much better, but we'll see. So, anyways, let's go right into it. Uh, kickoff match: We've got Tyson Kidd and Cesaro defending the tag team championships against the Usos, A New Day, and Los Matadores. What the hell was that? <laughs> That's, That's how we say it here. Um, oh my god! Fan <laughs> you just threw me. Ask, ask Joe. That's a that's a Joe thing. We have to we have to do it. Wow! <laughs> I thought you guys were gonna have to put up with me. Okay, so this is a lot of names for one match, and this sort of situation always reminds me of what we call a cozy mystery, which is something where kind of like a locked room where you have a set group of people, maybe. 10 people one of them is going to be the victim and one of them is going to be the murderer so this specifically reminds me of an episode of murder she wrote called who threw the barbitals in mrs fletcher's chowder so it's a dinner party there are a number of people who are there and one of the dinner guests drops dead of course it's poison uh given the title are you talking about the shaving cream no that's barbasol okay and what do you know about shaving cream beardo (laughs) So as I know very little about most of these wrestlers, so I'm going to judge them mostly based on their names. So first we've got Tyson Kidd and uh, Cesaro and Natalia. So we've got a fake cowboy sounding guy, a fake Roman, and a fake Russian. You know who doesn't like rule baking cowboys or European foreigners? People in Cabot Cove, Maine. Wait, 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 wait. Who's the third? Uh, when I looked it up, said Natalia was in it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes, you're right. You're right. Okay. Go on. Continue. So our next group is Los Matadores. J- just to be clear, N- Natalia isn't in this match. She's just like their valet. Regardless. Okay. Don't throw my game, dude. Okay. <laughs> so because they're Hispanic, you'd think that maybe Cabot Cove would be prejudiced against them, but they're technically North Americans, so they're part of the party, too. I think that... I think that they would be a good guest to the dinner party. They probably aren't going to kill anybody. Next, we have Big E and Kofi Kingston. I know a little bit about these guys. Big E's butt looks like a loaf of bread. And Kofi Kingston, well, he might have been born in Ghana. He was raised in Massachusetts, so he's totally an East Coast bro. People in Maine love that crap. They also love bread. They've also got this guy called Xavier Woods. I don't know anything about him. But it sounds like a type of vest you'd buy in an L.L. Bean catalog, and people from Maine love that crap, too. So our last dinner guests would be the Usos. They're entertainers. They dance. They're brothers. How sweet and innocent, right? So who puts the powder in the chowder? (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Didn't mean that. You're going to have to edit. Okay. So in the Murder, She Wrote TV episode, the main suspect was a woman who was desperate to escape her terrible husband. So obvious choices, obvious parallels would be Naomi or Natalia. But as usual, the real killer turns out to be another party. And the real killer kills because he wants control of a family business. 
Who in this theme is part of a family business? The Usos. So here's my prediction. One of them is going to get knocked out pretty quickly, but the other one is going to win. So the Usos win. Yeah, okay. ultimately the Usos okay. will win. All right, next match is Wade Barrett defending the Intercontinental Championship in a seven-man ladder match against Dean Ambrose, R-Truth, Dolph Ziggler, Luke Harper, Stardust, and Daniel Bryan. Okay, so first of all, why is this called an Intercontinental match? No one knows. Aren't all these dudes American? No, uh, Wade Barrett is definitely British. For real British? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's like two continents. Let's call this the bicontinental match because that makes much more sense. So I don't know much about like well, half Stardust these guys. Stardust technically is not from this world. So it's almost... Intergalactic match? Yeah, yeah, almost. It's almost like inter... Yeah, intergalactic, interplanetary. Get your crap together, title naming people. Get it together. So I don't know much about half these guys. This is just like the first one. And I was at this point in the afternoon, I was way too lazy to even Wikipedia them. So this kind of situation happens in a small town. You get a bunch of nobodies and you get a bunch of bigwig guys that everybody knows. So there's one episode of Murder, She Wrote, where the bigwig, the mayor, turns out this little nobody woman pops up and says, hey, this guy's my husband. He abandoned me and my child. There's only one problem with that storyline, though. That child didn't exist. And who, in this match, has a child that may or may not exist? Our truth and little Jimmy. Obvious parallel, right? Uh, obvious parallel. So, in this episode of Murder, She Wrote, the woman with the fake child is exposed as a fraud, and the winners are the mayor and his constituents. So, in order to determine who was the mayor, I had to uh, have some people vote for him. So, I text messaged. This it was draw poll. Like 3.30 in the afternoon, three people. One mm -hmm. guy responded. It was Joe, kindly. And he told me that he thought that Barrett would make a great mayor of Cabot Cove because he would do what needed to be done. Even if it was bad news, you know, he would deliver the goods. So according to Joe and me, we believe that Barrett is going to win this match because he's the mayor and he's going to step up where he needs to. Okay. Wade Barrett uh, retains the Intercontinental Championship. The third match we'll talk about is the second annual Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. It's So far, right now, it's got 20 participants. There's always a chance that we'll have uh, some surprise entries. But overall, who you got? Is that what Battle Royal means? I hate these matches. They go on forever. You know who's going to win this match? Nobody. We all lose. This is the time when I get up to go to the bathroom. Oh, that was your prediction? I got no prediction. I didn't know what a battle royal match was until right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's 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 your that's your Royal Rumble style match. Ugh, terrible. Let's just pass on this one. Okay. Rusev will defend the US championship against John Cena. What? Seriously, title naming guys. What is your problem? Okay. So this plot line follows not only a few episodes of Murder She Wrote but also one of the books. So typically what happens in these plot lines is Jessica Fletcher is invited to Russia as some kind of special visitor, maybe because of literacy or because of her knowledge of criminology or just as an ambassador because she's famous. So typically what happens next in the sort of scenario is there's going to be a murder, obviously. There's some kind of spy and surveillance drama. Usually towards the end, we think Jessica's not going to be able to make it back to America. And then at the last minute, one of the Russians who's been following her the whole time turns out to be an American sympathizer. He assists with her escape. He helps capture the murder. He retrieves her passport. And this is totally how this match is going to end. Rusev so, wins, right? Yeah, I think Cena's going to be taken for a ride the whole time. You're going to think that he's going to win. But ultimately, he is going to win. Wait. Yes. Sorry. Cena's going to win, but he's not going to oh. win on his own. That's the opposite of what you said. I... <laughs> <laughs> I was about to rub it into everybody's face. I was the only one. Well, Joe. Joe and me were the only ones who predicted Rusev was going to win. I think Cena's going to win, but I don't think he's going to do it on his own. I think he's going to get some kind of assist from one of the Russians. So either, either something's going to happen with Rusev or his manager is going to step in, do something stupid, and it's going to allow for Cena to win. There's going to be some kind of epic breakdown in the Russian system that's going to allow Cena the win. Sorry. That's how Jessica Fletcher wrote it. That's what she wrote. 
All right, the next match is AJ and Paige versus the Bella Twins. Twin magic. Okay, so with all these brunette ladies, of course, it reminds me of being at Loretta's Beauty Salon. So first we have AJ Lee. She's a tough lady, just like Loretta, the owner of the beauty salon. Loretta always knows what's going down in the neighborhood, and sometimes she can seem a little bit harsh, a little bit brash, but really she's got a heart of gold. Paige's dark hair reminds me of Ideal Malloy, which is an actual character name. She's a demure woman, but she's got kind of a surprisingly sexy, slutty side. She is very ideal. Yeah, she's the Ideal Malloy. <laughs> Next, we have the Bella Twins. They're close friends. One is married and one is looking. This naturally reminds me of the relationship between Jessica Fletcher, a widow, and Eve Simpson, her sassy, sexy lady friend. In the beauty salon, the way the relationships work is that everyone wins or loses at the same time because they're kind of cultish. So when one of them was sleeping with the stupid but very compassionate mailman, they all slept with him. And when one of them was duped by a phony out-of-state lottery, they all lost their money. All except for Jessica Fletcher, who is above that type of nonsense. So usually the bad guy is the, some type of third party. And obviously, because the Bella Twins represent Jessica Fletcher and her bestest friend, they're going to win. But my main prediction isn't the win. It's that some third party is going to be involved in this match in a major way. Because that's always how beauty salon drama plays out. I feel like your your statement about the mailman, your mailman is John Cena, okay? Your lottery that everyone thinks they're going to win and then they lose is hashtag give divas a chance. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. I think that we're going to, I think this prediction will work for both this of us. This third party, I don't know. Um, but you don't have a winner for this match? Oh, no, the Bella Twins. Oh, the Bella Twins. Okay. Yeah, right. they're going to win. We're on the same page there as well. Next up, we've got Rollins versus Randy Orton. Randy Bobandy, who you got? Okay. So what we have here is someone representing himself as an agent of a justice-themed organization along with two bodyguards. Almost like a private eye with his cronies, right? Just like recurring guest character, sassy private eye Harry McGraw. So Harry is a New York private eye. He is always getting into fights. And it's even better for him. He loves to get into fights that aren't fair. So, you know, he'll have Jessica Fletcher and the municipal police as his backup, and he'll go pick a fight, and he'll get his ass handed to him. So in this case, Jessica Fletcher and the municipal police are obviously Jamie Noble and Joey Mercury as his backup. Unfortunately for Harry, usually when he when he tries to go into these fights, he just gets beat the crap up, you know? He only emerges victorious when he does something stupid and isolates himself. So like in the middle of the night, he decides to break back into the apartment. Then he's saved at the last minute. So I think that if Rollin wants the win, it's only going to happen if someone knocks out his backup, Jamie and Joey. Otherwise, Randy's going to win this match. I'm amazed by the amount of research that you've done for this. I did no research at all. Well, I texted you few, and Joe at 3.30. A few days ago, you didn't know who Sting was, but you know who <laughs> Joey Mercury and Jamie Noble are. I think that's that's awesome. That was Wikipedia. <laughs> this prediction brought to you by Wikipedia and Joe. <laughs> so you are going with Rollins to win. Rollins will only win if Jamie and Joey are knocked out. He can't win with backup. I see. I see. Because that's always when Harry gets punched in the face. Right on. All right. We've got three more matches. And just to uh, remind everyone, uh, wife quotes, this is... WrestleMania 31 predictions from a Murder She Wrote fan. So I, I just wanted to clarify. In that case you were confused you, you about all the talk about Murder She Wrote, <laughs> you are completely lost right now. That is what is happening. That's what he's feeling right now. <laughs> Bray Wyatt versus The Undertaker. Okay, so in this match, we have two creepy people who like to deal in otherworldly special effects. It's just like that episode where this sweet young thing walks into an episode where they're auditioning for Salem Witch Trial play, and she walks onto the stand and she reads the part of the convicted witch so perfectly that off scene, somewhere, a wind machine turns on, and her hair blows and there's spooky music in the background. That is some acting. Or is it? Because there's a chance that she might also be the spirit of her long-dead, wrongfully convicted ancestor. Kind of like how Undertaker might actually be Kane. 
obviously Bray Wyatt just can't compete with Undertaker slash Kane for the title of creepiest wrestler here, right? Understandably, he's going to be jealous. Just like Eve Simpson and all those other bitches who don't like the attention this mysterious witchy stranger who can also act as getting from all the menfolk. But is Bray jealous enough to kill? I don't think so. While Bray's wrestling might not be exemplary, it's not going to be harsh enough to undo The Undertaker. He's going to emerge victorious and get his deceased ancestor pardoned posthumously. Or possibly win the match. One or the other will happen. Or maybe both. Long live Paul Bear. Sting versus Triple H. Sting made his triumphant uh, debut. Not necessarily return. Return to the mainstream wrestling scene as he joined WWE to fight Triple H. This was so confusing for me because my first thought was, wait, is Sting wrestling now? Who let that happen? Technically, you did call him the lobster guy from over the weekend. Well, here's the thing. (laughs) Whenever I wander into the room and I see you watching wrestling, he's on the mic. He's never actually wrestling. Sure. I've never seen him bust a move in the ring. It's never once happened. And then this week when I walked in and saw him, he'd changed his face paint. He didn't look like the Joker anymore. And he was wearing some kind of lobster shirt. And I didn't get it until you pointed out that his name is Sting and it was probably actually a scorpion. Then it made a lot more sense. (laughs) Sometimes it's a wonder that I managed to get myself dressed in the morning. (laughs) Anyway, since my impression of Sting is that he is a man of all talk and no action, at least to me, I think he'd be least likely as a murderer. But you know who would be a good murderer is the guy who has everything to lose, and that's Triple H. He is a kid who grew up in this big, respectable wrestling family. He married the wrestling heiress. He's poised to take over the company. He's just like that scheming couple in that early 90s business episode where April O'Neil conspires with her gentleman friend to commit a murder to keep the family business. Was this a crossover between Murder, She Wrote and Ninja Turtles? Uh, No, it was the actress playing April O'Neil, but all I could think of when I saw her was, it talks when she sees the rat. (laughs) It was (laughs) the pinnacle of her career, seriously. (laughs) But you know what's going to hurt Triple H's family business? Losing to this lobster shirt t-shirt guy. Triple H has to defeat Sting, because otherwise he's going to lose in life. It just has to happen. My pick is Triple H. Okay. Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship. So this is a classic case of your ugly brute versus your handsome yet slightly smarmy fan favorite. So in Cabot Cove, there's usually a case where someone with a who's just big and bad and morally contemptible, like a shady real estate developer... Or a bank that forecloses, which is not realistic, by the way, you guys, but a bank that forecloses immediately upon the first missed payment. So generally, the audience roots against that person. On the other boy, the guy who's like the pretty boy favorite, nine times out of ten has some kind of skeleton in his closet. And I think that that's the case here. Rain seems like he's the fan favorite, and I am basing this on nothing more than my Twitter feed, which, you know, not really good research, right? (laughs) But I predict that Roman is going to win this one. And I think that he has to because here's what I see happening. He's going to win and he's going to really cement himself firmly into fan favorite status here. And then he's going to do a real quick sharp heel turn. That's what I think is going to happen. Roman Reigns, sharp heel turn? Is he already a heel? No. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, I see it happening because people seem so gung-ho for him. There's nowhere else for him to go but down. At least once he wins this match, which he will. Jessica Fletcher said so. This is very interesting. Uh, I uh, I like the idea of a, of a heel Roman Reigns. I think that is something that we have discussed before, and I think a lot of people are backing that idea. Best case scenario for me would be if he got some kind of sponsorship deal like with Prell, because he's greasy as hell. Prell? <laughs> he, is. he is. In yeah. real life, he's like coated in baby oil. All right, so let's, uh, let's do a quick recap. Tyson Kidd... And Cesaro will lose the Tag Team Championships to the Usos. Wade Barrett will successfully defend the Intercontinental Championship match. Or the title, rather. The Bella Twins will defeat AJ and Paige. John Cena will win the U.S. Championship over Rusev. Barely. Undertaker will defeat Bray Wyatt, avenging the death of Paul Bearer. Randy Orton defeats Rollins. Unless, by some stroke of luck... Rollins' backup gets knocked out, in which case Rollins might have a chance. What's the likelihood of that? I don't know. Probably. What's more likely? Probably like four out of ten. So Orton wins. Probably Orton. Okay. Triple H defeats Sting. Mm-hmm. 
And Roman Reigns not only wins the title, defeats Brock Lesnar, but also turns heel. Heck yeah. All right, that's it for this episode. Thanks, everyone, for listening. If this is your first time, I'm sorry. Uh, But definitely give us another shot by checking out fanstalkwrestling.com for the full archive, as well as our other listening options and other podcasts that we do. Leave a rating and review if you listen through a service that allows it, and spread the word. Not enough people listen to this podcast and these conversations that we have together. We'll see you guys next time. And enjoy WrestleMania. WrestleMania.